Okay, so today we're going to decorate a cake together. I have this really cool kind of watercolor slash marbling design idea that I wanna try. So some people are quite visionary when they decorate cakes, they can kind of do it on the fly. I'm the exact opposite, so I had to come up with a system that worked for me. I made this sheet, I call it the cake planner. It's just a sheet of paper that I kind of doodle on. And this is how I kind of work through the cake decorating process. So I'm gonna walk you through that today as well as this kind of marbling watercolor technique. So feel free to print this out. I will leave a link below this video so that you can use it for your own cake brainstorming. It's organized so that there's a timeline in the upper right hand corner so you can schedule out your tasks, which I will cover in much more detail in another video. So if you have to schedule things ahead of time, then in the middle of the sheet, you have a kind of drawing area where you can draw a full size cake on the left and then a slice on the right, say if you wanted to do like fillings and stuff. Okay, so let's talk about the specs of this cake. This cake was donated. I am a volunteer baker for a charity called Cake for Kids. They provide birthday cakes for underserved children. And what we get as volunteer bakers is a small description of what the child wants for their birthday cake. Sometimes we get a lot of detail about what the kid wants. Um, this time the child only requested that it was a vanilla cake that was pink and white. So I immediately knew that I wanted to make a bright pink vanilla cake for the inside so that when the child cut open the cake, that they could see this bright and happy color. Now for the outside of the cake, the look I was going for was kind of a marbling or watercolor effect. And to do that, I just kept things really simple by doing the crumb coat and the filling with just plain white vanilla Swiss meringue buttercream. As for the size of the cake, sometimes we get a specific request. If not, they just ask that we bake one that's gonna feed at least 10 people. So I do a three layer cake, which is actually quite tall and more than enough for 10 people. Now in between each layer, I use about a cup of frosting to fill the cake and now I'm going to proceed with the crumb coat so I'm going to take the rest of my crumb coating frosting put it on the top of the cake use an offset spatula to push a lot of the frosting off of the sides and then use that to fill in any of the gaps and crumb coat the sides probably tell by looking at my crumb coat it doesn't have to be perfect at all not smooth you can tell my top is a little bit crooked um i don't even think i noticed that when i was doing this recording um, but once you have everything covered go ahead and stick that in the fridge to firm up for at least 20 minutes okay the next step in the decorating is the outside or the marbling of the frosting i want to give credit to george's cakes on youtube she's an amazing artist and cake decorator she has a marbling technique that i'm going to try and replicate today and hopefully I do it justice. So here's the cake. It should be completely firm to the touch so that when you, you press on it, it doesn't leave any fingerprints behind. So I have a couple shades of pink, one that's a lighter color like this and I have a brighter pink. And what we're going to do is just kind of apply random splotches of these pink along with the white until everything is completely covered with this uneven coverage of buttercream. Then go over that with with another coverage of just the white buttercream. So it's gonna be pretty much white all on the outside, but we're gonna be scraping most of this off. I know it looks really thick at this point. Then when the cake more or less looks a lot like this, start smoothing off the top and smoothing out the sides. So let me briefly explain how this George's Cakes technique works and why. So the buttercream is at room temperature right now. It's pretty soft and we need it to be that way because there are gonna be a lot of holes because we apply the buttercream kind of in splotches for that first layer you know the pink and the white and so by scraping it at this point when the buttercream is soft we're pushing all this extra white buttercream into those holes so that there are no gaps in between those pink and white splotches so once you get your frosting fairly smooth it's still going to have a lot of holes here and there that's totally normal but the cake is a somewhat consistent shape go ahead and place this in the fridge i waited about 15 minutes before the next step and this is kind of the tricky part because you don't 
don't want it to get so firm that you can't manipulate the buttercream anymore, yet you do want it to be firm enough so that the underneath pink frosting has set. So that's kind of the secret. Once your buttercream has set on the underneath, those pink and white splotches, anything that we scrape off at that point is not going to disturb that pattern. If it were too soft, what you end up doing is kind of blending this into one color. So the first thing you see me doing here when I take it out of the fridge is to fill in any of the holes with some extra frosting before I start scraping. And because this is kind of a multicolor effect, you can use any color and it should blend really easily. Now you want to start scraping the top white layer of frosting off. You're going to notice that the butter is going to give a bit of resistance because it's firm from the fridge, which is actually how you get a really smooth finish on these cakes as well. So just keep going until you like the color that you see coming through from the underneath. And once you're done with the sides, go ahead and finish off the top by pulling that upper edge towards the center to get a really smooth top surface. At this point, I usually put the whole thing in the fridge for about 20 minutes before proceeding with the final decorations. And for that, I really wanted to do a rope border along the top edge of the cake and then use these multicolored sprinkles to add a little bit of color. So I took all of that extra frosting that we scraped off on the outside of the cake, put it into a piping bag with the 2D and proceeded to do the rope border. Order. And although I seem pretty stoic when I'm working in the kitchen or not talking directly into the camera, this is my upset cake face. I didn't like the heaviness of this piping design as well as the single color against the marbled effect on the sides. And so I decided to scrape all of this off and try again. Because I had chilled the cake before, so that bottom part of the cake with the top coat is completely firm. And so any of this that I scrape off is not going to affect the final look of the cake. I ended up just piping flowers all along the edge, which I thought looked a little bit more delicate and matched the cake more. Plus that's just the universe in action, right? Nothing is ever going to go to plans. So as much as I put on that cake planner, um, sometimes I just don't like the final look and you just have to be flexible. And we're usually asked to personalize the cake in some way with a message. This one just asked for a happy birthday. So I used my Cricut to print out a glitter pink happy birthday that I placed on the top of the cake. 